All right, so I have had an epiphany and the epiphany is that I might need to do a better job of helping you guys to determine what constitutes a good deal or not. And I've kind of had this epiphany because several people have reached out to me and asked questions about how much I paid for this book or that book. And I've asked them follow up questions as to, you know, what they intend to do with that information. And what many of these people have said to me is I want to know how much you paid so that I can evaluate whether the book that I am looking at is a good deal or not. And in that moment or in those moments, I should say, I realized that I could probably do a better job of helping people to think through what is and isn't a good deal. Because the reality is that what I paid for a comic or a lot of comics six months ago or a year ago doesn't help you today, nor does it help you a month from now. But if I can help you to maybe think about your purchases or your potential purpose purchases a little bit differently, then maybe that's a win. Maybe that's the way to go versus just giving you a price that I paid for a comic, which in my opinion, isn't all that helpful. So as you watch this video, just kind of keep that in mind that what I'm trying to do is to give you a couple of things to think about so that you can think your way through whether the purchase that you are considering is a good buy or not. This content is sponsored by BCW Supplies. Visit them at bcwsupplies.com. What I wanna do in this video is to offer you 10 practical tips that I think that you can put into practice that will help you to evaluate whether a book or a lot of books that you are considering to, to purchase, whether it's a sensible buy or not. And some of these tips that you'll hear are common sense kind of things where you'll hear it and you'll be like, okay, that makes sense. Some of them will be things that you're gonna to have to think about and some of them are going to be things that you're gonna to have to do. Like you may have to put in a little work in order to actually leverage this tip. But my goal is to throw a couple of things out to you for consideration. By no means am I saying that this list is a comprehensive list, nor am I saying that for every purchase that I use all 10 of these tips, right? Because the, the honest thing is that there are some things that I buy that I don't even think about, right? If, if, if a book is 10 bucks or 20 bucks, I am not going to spend any considerable amount of time evaluating this purchase because it's 10 bucks or 20 bucks. That's not significant. But as you start to buy books that impact your budget and whatever your budget happens to be, when, when it starts to impact your budget in a significant way, you want to, at least in my opinion, invest a little bit more time and thought into that purchase. When you start spending a hundred bucks or 500 bucks or a thousand, or $5,000, again, whatever your budget is and whatever is meaningful to you, you want to invest a little bit more consideration. If it's five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, you're like, eh, that's no big deal, right? So just kind of keep that in mind that these tips, you don't have to use them every single time, but there are some, some tools that you can put in your tool bag to consider when you're making purchases. So the first tip that I wanna offer you is to never buy on impulse, right? Potentially buying things on impulse is like one of the worst things that you can do because oftentimes you haven't thought about it, you haven't considered it, you just hit the buy now button, right? And you end up regretting that decision. So my, my first tip is to not buy on impulse unless what you're buying is something super cheap that doesn't significantly impact your budget. If you're buying a dollar book, who cares? Five dollar book, who cares? But if you're buying, you know, a hundred dollar or two hundred or three hundred dollar book on impulse, maybe you want to spend a couple of more moments thinking about that one. 
closely tied to number one is the second tip. And the second tip is stay away from the auctions <laughs> because unless you have done your research, going into an auction, you will have the tendency to overspend, to spend a little bit more money than what you anticipated because you're caught up in the excitement of winning the excitement of bidding and winning that book over the 10 or 20 other people that happen to be bidding while you're doing it. And so I have personally found that if I get involved in an auction, I will overspend, I will make mistakes. And so for that reason, I try to either avoid them or spend a lot more time thinking about an auction before actually entering the auction. And again, that works best for my personality. You'll have to figure out what works best for you. The third tip that I wanna offer is kind of a no-brainer, but it has to be said. Do your research. Take the time to actually do some research because sometimes by doing a little bit of digging, by doing a Google search, by jumping on a, a forum or asking a friend for their perspective, you might be able to look at a situation, a book, a purchase from a slightly different perspective and either make a more informed purchase or realize that you don't need to actually make that purchase. So do your research. That is above all else, one of the most important tips that you will hear in this countdown. So I said this earlier, but I just want to touch on it once again, that as you're asking your friends and your buddies or whoever it is about what they spent for a particular book, what they spent six months ago, a month ago, even sometimes depending upon the book a week ago matters not. And I say that because in some cases, this market can be so dynamic or a book can be so dynamic that what happened a week ago, a month ago, six months ago, a year ago matters not because things are changing very, very rapidly. So asking your buddy what he or she paid for a book may not be the best piece of information to make a decision on. So just kind of keep that in mind. So another general tip that I want to offer is that, in my opinion, buying something cheaply or inexpensively does not mean that it's a good buy, right? Because you could have a ton of 50 cent books and have nothing that you really enjoy, nothing of any value, but you only spent 50 cents. That doesn't mean that that is a good buy. In my opinion, a good buy in a, in a fair buy is one that you make where you don't have regret about that purchase because you did your research and you recognize that the price that you pay for that book was a good price. And that puts you in a position where you can actually enjoy that book, where you don't feel that knot in your stomach that you got screwed or that you screwed up. Right, So for me, it's not always about getting something for cheap, so much as making a purchase that I feel good about, where I've enjoyed the experience of buying that book. And more importantly, I actually enjoy having the book in my collection because I don't regret it. So it's not about cheap so much as it is about making smart purchases. All right, so let's make the assumption that you have already identified the book that you want to pick up, right? So we're just going to make the assumption that you've already identified whatever that book is that you want to purchase. So we're just going to skip ahead and we're going to talk through how you actually decide whether the purchase that you are making is a smart purchase, whether it's a fair purchase to make. So let's dig into some of those tips. So the fourth tip that I want to offer is to take some time to analyze your data. There is an ample amount of data out there about comic book sales, if you know where to look, right? So if you have Go Collect, you can dig through Go Collect and look at the most recent sales. If you have GPA, you can go to GPA 
and look at the most recent sales. Both of those services actually cost something. So if money is an issue and you don't have access to one of those services, find a friend. Sometimes a friend can actually look it up for you and be able to help you. But let's say you don't have any of that, right? You can always go to eBay. eBay gives you the ability to search sold items. And by searching the sold items, you can actually see what is happening in the market. So that, that's three ways that you can analyze the data, sales data, GPA, go collect, and eBay sold items. All three of these things will give you a feeling for what is the current fair market value of the comic that you are trying to purchase. And then what you want to do is you want to dig into the data and you want to look for what is the data telling you, right? So look for trends and patterns. How frequently is the book selling? It, are the sales every single day? Are the sales weekly? Are the sales happening every month, right? Because there's so few of the book or for whatever reason, there's no real demand. The book is, is not moving all that often. That will tell you something. When you look at the data, are you noticing any patterns around the price to the grade? Sometimes when you dig into the data, what you can see is that for every half point in grade, there is an incremental price increase. And I noticed that when I actually did my breakdown on, I think it was Hulk 181 and also X-Men 1. What I found is that for every half increment that, a, that the grade went up, for a, a graded book, there was an incremental price increase to a certain point. And then when it reached, let's say, you know, 5.0 or something like that, then the, um, then the price dramatically went up from that point. But sometimes there is a correlation between price and grade. So you wanna look for those patterns because by looking for that, it'll help you to better understand how much money do you have to spend for the grade that you wanna get? And if you're targeting this particular grade, let's say that it's a 5.0, if you were to wait another week or two and save up a little bit of extra money, could you go to a 5.5 or a 6.0, right? So by looking at the data, it will help you to make some more informed decisions about how quickly you need to move, how much you need to spend, and how much extra you might need to save to get a slightly better book. So while we're on tip number four, another thing that I want to offer to you is as you're looking at the frequency of sales you and, and also the price, you have to ask yourself, what do you think will happen next, right? Because not every book is going up uh, and not every book goes up all that dramatically. Sometimes books go down. Sometimes there's big gaps between when books are sold. So you have to ask yourself, based upon the data that I'm seeing, what do I think is going to happen next? Do I anticipate that book staying the same, going down, whatever it is, ask yourself that because again, that will help you to kind of figure out how quickly do I need to move? So for example, Amazing Fantasy number 15, when we did this analysis a while ago, went up $500 every single year, right? It, it, it just goes up $500, right? And that happened right up until recently with the whole Fox merger deal when it just got all out of whack. But you kind of knew that if you waited a year, you were gonna pay $500 more, right? And that's just what the data shows when you dig into it, right? So that kind of lets you know how quickly you need to move or not move because of how the book performs. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about about how sometimes you have to throw that data out of the window, but we'll get to that in another point or two. Just realize that we are at that point. So what you wanna do is as you're looking at your data, one other important and I think very important aspect of this analysis that you have to do is you have to look at the news and you have to look at what is actually happening in the market. So the book that you're considering if you suddenly see huge spikes in, in the price of the book, you see the, uh, the volume increase in terms of sales volume, it was you know every other month, then it became monthly, then all of a sudden, every single day, multiple sales per day. You have to ask yourself why. And sometimes the why can be found in the latest trailer or the latest uh, hot list that has come out, or the latest speculation video that is making the rounds on YouTube. These things all have an impact on sales price. And this is actually something that I've spoken about in previous videos. 
around scarcity and how the perception of scarcity will actually drive demand and how hype will actually drive sales prices as well. And so you just want to be aware of the current market to better understand the data that you're actually looking at. You don't just want to take the data on its face value and, and, and assume that this, bright, this book is on an upper trend and will continue on an upper trend when maybe the reason it was on that trend was because a trailer had come out that said that they were going to make a movie. Now, what happens if that movie never happens, right? Or that trailer comes out and the trailer is a flop. So you just want to be aware of the data and then also the news around the market that may positively or negatively impact the book that you are considering purchasing. So the seventh tip that I want to offer is to not rush it. Don't rush your purchases. And this kind of goes back to one of the, the earlier points that I made. Sometimes one of the worst things that you can do is to get under pressure and feel like you need this book today, that you have to make this purchase because if you don't, then, then the window will pass you by, right? Um, how many books have we seen within this last year where there's been all of the hype around a book and it is suddenly the hot book and then a week later, a month later, no one is talking about that book. Like if you think about the Baby Norman book, The Amazing Spider-Man, was it 263 or something like that? First appearance of Baby Norman, that book went from a $3 book to a $30 book for like two weeks. And then it was gone after that. I'm not quite sure where that book sits now, but I don't think that it's a $30 book anymore. So. Be patient, do your analysis, do your homework, make sure that you are making a, an informed decision about your purchase so that when you make the purchase, you actually don't regret it. But that actually brings me to my next point. And the next point is don't be paralyzed by the analysis. They call it analysis paralysis. When you get so wrapped up in the data and, and analyzing and crunching the numbers and trying to be super smart that you actually never pull the trigger on the book that you want. Because sometimes, right? And again, there's no absolute sedimium. Sometimes you have done your homework and you just have a feeling and you're just like, this is my book. I am gonna buy this book. You know what? That's okay if that's what you decide to do. But don't not pull the trigger, right? Because at the end of the day, if you buy a book and you don't regret it, if you pay five bucks more than what it's worth, 10 bucks, 100 bucks, if you don't regret it and it's within your means to actually buy that book, it's okay right? It is okay. But if you never buy that book because you're so busy trying to get the perfect deal, then you're missing out. So don't overanalyze it to the point where you don't actually make a decision. So the very last tip that I have is to enjoy all of it. Enjoy the hunt for the book enjoy the process of acquisition and enjoy the book when you actually get it. You know, um, this is one of the lessons that I've learned throughout my life, not just in comics, but just generally is that I tended to love the hunt. And then once I got that thing, I was on to the next hunt. I never took the time to really appreciate and value what it was that I had in my hand, the goal that I had achieved, whatever that goal was. And, and I think it's just important as I've, as I've gotten older, I've tried to do more of that. I've tried to slow down. I've tried to um, still enjoy the hunt and still enjoy the process, but I've, I've learned to pause and take a moment to appreciate the thing that I have worked so hard to get, right? So, Take that time, take that moment, it, and it's okay to enjoy that win, to enjoy that success, because to me, it makes all of it much more enjoyable, much more pleasurable, if you just take that time to, to acknowledge and, and appreciate what it is that you've done. So again, this is not an extensive list of things. This is not a list that you have to use every single time you make a purchase, right? But my, my goal with 
a lot of my videos is to give you a couple of things to think about and to consider. You know, as you're listening to this video, you may have heard some things that you can use. You may have heard some things that don't necessarily work for you. And I think that is perfectly fine. You may have heard some things in this video where you're like, I disagree with that. Or I think it could work better if it were twisted this way. That is what the comment section is for, right? Because hopefully we can create a dialogue and have a little discussion around things that, that people like, things that people don't like, and things that people may want to try to ensure that when they make these purchases, they are making smart decisions. So make use of the comment section. Let's have a discussion and uh, let's, let's hopefully walk away from all of this a little bit more informed, a little bit more knowledgeable than when we started. As always, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Be sure to visit BCW Supplies to learn about their more than 950 plus products for collectors. Products include card sleeves, display cases, comic bags, storage boxes, and gaming folders, just to name a few items. Head over to BCW Supplies today for more information.